On August 5th, AMD launched their brand new APUs, the Ryzen 5 5600G and Ryzen 7 5700G. Both of those I've reviewed well over a month ago because they've been available in pre-built systems for a while. However, what hasn't been available as easily and AMD is not selling directly to consumer is probably what I would guess is the most anticipated replacement for all the other APUs, the Ryzen 3 5300G. I was able to get my hands on one by spending way too much money on eBay for one that came out of a pre-built. And that's what we're going to be checking out in today's video. It's a review of the Ryzen 3 5300G, seeing how it stacks up against AMD's other APUs that are currently out there and seeing whether or not it's worth checking out. Let's talk about all that after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD tech video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their new all-in-one performance package 4.0. The first thing that I want to talk about in the Performance Package 4.0 kit is the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive region of your bodies, namely your Dragon Balls. This Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart cordless charging system, and these little LED lights on the front are there to show you how much juice you have up to 90 minutes of use with a full charge, which if you're taking 90 minutes to just clear the hedges there, how long were you abandoned. If you're taking 90 minutes to clear your hedges, you might want to do it a little bit more regularly. You can also tap the button on the front three times and it enables the travel lock feature. Also included in the Performance Package 4.0 kit are two products that you never knew you needed until you picked them up. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. If your Dragon Balls have turned to stone because you used up all your wishes, just apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for all day body odor protection. And the Crop Reviver is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Shenron, on command, however you want it. Manscaped really has you covered from head to toe. And this is their Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. It's a wireless nose trimmer with the same skin safe technology as the groin trimmer, so you don't have to worry about tugging or cutting those sensitive little nose hairs, which cry every single time because I've been resorting to yanking it. No longer. No more nose yanking for Brett with the Weed Whacker. And for a limited time, you get all of this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti chafing boxer briefs. And you can get 20% off, plus free shipping, plus those two free gifts at Manscaped instantly by going to manscaped.com forward slash UFD, which will be linked in the video description. So go check them out at the link in the video description, manscaped.com forward slash UFD to get that 20% off, that free shipping, plus those two free gifts, as I mentioned. Big thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. So the Ryzen 3 5300G is probably what I would consider the best positioned APU that's out there the 5600G and the 5700G both are great for enthusiasts with six and eight cores respectively, but a lot of the people who are buying APUs can get by with four cores and eight threads and the GPU upgrades that they make down the line likely don't need those higher CPU core counts. I actually think that the 2400G and the 3400G hit a sweet spot with their core and thread targets, even if the GPU performance was slightly underwhelming, but that's not the case with the 5300G. So we have four cores and eight threads on a Zen 3 CPU setup. We have eight megabytes of L3 cache, which notably is less than the other APUs AMD is launching. The 5600G and 5700G both have 16 megabytes. The eight megabytes in the 5300G is more similar to the previous generation APUs that AMD has launched. We've got a base clock of 4 gigahertz, a boost clock not that much higher, 4.2 gigahertz with a 65 watt TDP. It has the same limitations as the other APUs AMD is launching with PCI Express 3.0. And then on the GPU side, we have Vega graphics coming in with six GPU cores and 1700 megahertz. And as far as pricing goes, AMD hasn't released anything. The 5600G is selling for $259 right now. I personally had to pay $300 for this 5300G because that was the only way I could get it to check it out. And that person who I bought it from on eBay got a nice payday for it. It is available in some pre-builds. They're not readily accessible, but I'm hoping if AMD ever does launch this, it's probably in like the $100 to $130 price point because that's where it really makes a lot of sense. I'll be directly comparing it to the Ryzen 3 3100 later on, but $99 for the 3100, you tack on the APU, that gets you to 129, same price as the 3300X, you can choose between those two, but you get Zen 3. So let's go ahead and look at what the gaming performance is on the APU 
by itself because that's probably how a lot of people are going to start off with these chips. No dedicated graphics card and just running AAA or esports titles as best as you can, which means we're coming in at a resolution of 720p with all of the settings turned to lowest. I've been doing this for all of my APU testing because I really think that's where you should be sitting if you pick up one of these APUs. You can squeeze out 1080p in some of these games, but you're gonna get below 30 FPS at that point. And I think really targeting 30 FPS, even maybe 60 in some of these games might be the right way to go. So let's take a look at the benchmarks and we can compare them to AMD's 5600G so you get an idea of what you're losing out on by going with this lower end chip. Starting off in Cinebench, in Cinebench R15, the CPU managed a 1091 in multi-core and 186 in single core, which is 36 and 15% slower than the 5600G respectively. In Cinebench R23, it's roughly the same percentage difference between the two, 37% slower on multi-core and 17% slower on single core. This makes a little bit of sense considering the fact that the 5300G has 33% fewer cores than the 5600G. Now let's get into the game benchmarks to find out exactly how well does this Ryzen 3 perform. And truth be told, it actually gets remarkably close to where the Ryzen 5 5600G sits in most of the games. There are a few 30% FPS differences that's likely coming because the CPU is less powerful, but those six GPU cores actually allow the 5300G to keep pace in a lot of games. So let's start off with Horizon Zero Dawn. We managed to get 45.8 FPS average, whereas the 5600G got 47.9. So really close in that one. Red Dead Redemption 2, we managed 38.7 FPS, but that one's a little bit further off from the 5600G. In Fortnite, we managed 136 FPS average within 4% of the 5600G. In Cyberpunk 2077, we got less than 30 FPS average coming in at 28.2, and that's 11% off the 5600G. Crisis Remastered, we managed 63.9 FPS at 720p low. Quite good there, about 6% difference between those two chips. Metro Exodus came in at 42.5 FPS average, which is about 30% off of the 5600G. And then Valorant, again, probably because of the CPU bottleneck, we managed 174.1 FPS, which is 28% off of the 5600G. In The Witcher 3, we managed just below 50 FPS, which puts us 8% in line with the 5600G. Death Stranding was 51.4, only 3% off with that one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 63.2 FPS, which is a 4% difference. GTA 5, we managed one 23.1, which is an almost 10% difference between the two chips. COD Warzone, we managed almost 60 FPS, averaging 57.9, which is a 11% difference between the two. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 42.2 FPS average, which is a 6% difference. And then the closest benchmark yet, Borderlands 3 coming in at 60.9 FPS, which is only 0.33% off of the 5600G. So getting remarkably close. Now this next two games, I actually did not test on the 5600G, so this is gonna be the 5300G by itself. Control, we managed 50.4 FPS. Resident Evil Village with AMD's FSR turned off, we got 58.3 FPS. But when you turn FSR on, the game looks like crap, but in performance mode, we managed 88.2 FPS. So FSR does make a pretty decent difference when it comes to APUs, actually gave us nearly 30 FPS more in Resident Evil Village. And as that technology starts to roll out to more games that actually matter, it's going to be a quite good uplift for APUs moving forward. And then in all of the testing that I did, that chip never got above 40 degrees Celsius. I have it on a 240 mil AIO in my test bench system, and it just, it stayed super cool. It was actually remarkable. So overall, the Ryzen 3 5300G looks like a really solid chip. 720p gaming, it's quite good. It's CPU performance, nearly in line with what you would expect from a four core Zen 3 chip. I'm actually highly impressed by it. This is actually the only way that you can get four cores on Zen 3 at this point, so it it's, it's great. But AMD is not selling this directly to consumer at this point and hasn't indicated any plans to do so, which is a real letdown. And then also getting OEM or pre-built systems that has this chip has been hard to find, at least in my research. It was easier for me to pick one up on eBay than it was for me to find a pre-built with it that could get here in a decent amount of time. But AMD's APUs 
are really good. This generation of the 5000 series having that Zen 3 CPU alleviated a lot of the bottlenecks that we saw in previous APUs. And then the GPU has continued to increase year over year, even though they're still using the Vega architecture. The Ryzen 3 5300G, if you can find it in a system that actually makes price sense, I would say is a great value for the end consumer. And I'm super impressed by all of it. We're gonna be doing a little bit more testing with the Ryzen 3 5300G coming up, comparing it again to the 3100 and even Intel's i3s to see how it does once you put a GPU with it. But as an APU by itself, it does pretty dang good. What do you think of the Ryzen 3 5300G and its benchmarks? Would you pick one up for yourself? Would you game on an office PC that actually had one of these? I wanna hear more from you down below. That being said, why don't you go check out our last video that we made where we compared the RX 580 versus the GTX 1060 here in 2021 to see how those two GPUs stack up against each other five years later. My goodness. I actually come to a different conclusion than I thought I was going to when I started that video. So go check that out and I'll see you in the next UFD Tech video, my friends. Cheers.